In relation to Corbyn Committee and the uh, resolution about the um, all the chairs of party clubs coming together, early in September at the point of publication of the uh, budget options, the idea is that obviously through, that, through the availability of the information at that point and through the chairs of all the committees and party clubs being around the table, that's the time to actually design or to, to work out the appropriate way to scrutinise. So uh, you know, these are suggestions, I think, for that, uh, for that working group to consider as part of that going forward. So that, that can be put to the um, meeting of the chairs and spokes at the time then? You know, obviously, yourself, that we need to put the board in that way. Okay. We got any more questions or comments on this particular set? Christina? Just clarification.
the black ants are not working, we have to be having the green ones in the public. I'd say, I'd say that possibly that's a, a, a similar job to the fight with the community as well of the constituent community chair by the chair, so that would be appropriate. And again, it's much more appropriate where we want to get into the public option and stuff like that. But we can, I'm sure we can find a way around it and do that. I have to do that. We can 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 do that.
or areas that are being flagged up as red. Are there any questions or comments just on what it was talking to?
The four red areas uh, are shown on pages 30 to 33. Uh, and it's really just to highlight, highlight the up-to-date position for you and how this arrived at the end of March. Uh, the first one is the adult care packages supported by Barrett Credit. Um, and this one is one that has been um, very well discussed in previous meetings, whereby we try and take it to get the actual system in. As it says there, we then have at the end of March 166 residential service users. That's now increased, I think it's about 220 at the moment. It is going up, as we've said, and we noticed that we are trying to encourage the area of usage. One of the issues is with the numbers that we're looking at um, of about 2,400 cases that we have for each residential and facility. Um, the uh, ones that are in the residential, we can put on direct debt at the moment until the new system is in, in which case we won't be able to get into asking the other people to do direct debit. We do have to try and encourage everybody uh, as they move on to other care packages to take that one up. Uh, the second one, uh, the red one, which is the percentage collection uh, on the council tax, now that isn't to actually do with the, the final rate of council tax collection. It's specifically to do with the additional debit that was raised last year, which is regarding the council tax support, which is the replacement of the benefit scheme, as well as the additional discounts and exemption charges, effectively charging people more that were only produced in April 13. And that highlighted that uh, effectively out of about 3.1 million, we collect 1.8 million a year. What I can assure members is that that collection does carry on into the next year, trying to ensure that we collect. I think it's been uh, explained previously, particularly with the council tax support scheme, those are people where we will look for deductions and benefits, which applies to the PWP, and we will then be re reducing their approximate 252 city pound debt will be paid by about 250 uh, per, per pound 50 per week, depending on the circumstances. So again, that will be an increase in debt that we will see, and obviously in the future year, we do actually then have another bill that we've already built for, and we're looking to try and improve against. Um, the final two beds are to do with the personal finance unit, uh, which is the responsibility for charges on residential and council uh, Again, the, the explanations are there with regard to the recovery, the work that we've done 
we're trying to ensure that we are collecting more of our charges, um, showing that we're trying to make an improved response ability to get more of it. As you'll see later on in the report, we've got up to date details as to how we're working on those areas. Uh, and to try and make sure that we get people into the correct habit of paying. And that's true on the current charges, which is the first one, which is DP11. The, uh, and the second one, which is DP11-1, is the historic charges. Those are the ones that relate to the uh, areas that when we took over, the amount of debt there was to try and then recover. That was set up by a separate team. They are teams from that we moved out of our benefit service and our revenue service to address those collections to try and make sure that we go through those debts to identify which ones we can get to pay and ultimately which ones we know is going to be no go. Uh, effectively on this figures, I did notice that uh, we didn't actually do the figures, so our, our target on the historic challenges was about 7 million. We've already gone at this point about to 4.6 million. That amount is now being worked through. I'm, I'm agreeing with the Director of Public Social Services, not only to look at this historic debt, but obviously this was set a given point when the Eugene Swarton report came. There is now more debt that is becoming older, and clearly as a debt collector, the older you be the debt, the less money you are getting. So effectively, we then will move not only to do these historic charges, but we now have resources to look at the next oldest, because the longer you leave it, the less money you are getting. So effectively, those are really that the high rates of those four areas on the net, and as to what we're trying to do. I see the questions here. Method. 
will actually cost money, uh, which uh, will be depending on where they pay, whether that's a traditional check, standing order, or actually coming in and paying by cash, which very few actually do. Um, it is normally a direct payment. That will be, it's normal, normally we would say something like 10 times more. So if it's 10, a, a transaction with time of value D, it will be at least 120 ish up to, depending on where they go, uh, it easily be up to two pounds. The other result of the cost is what people actually have to pay. So, um, but for instance, and again, if you do this, if you actually go into a bank, the bank will actually charge you the payer, not me, the council. Whereas in other methods of collection, say for the post office pay point, we actually have to have part of the national contract. We will pay for payment to both those providers for actually doing work. So yes, you are correct. It is the cheapest method of direct debit, uh, which is why we are trying to move people on to And if, if people do payments weekly, or if I'm just trying to wrap up, if I work out about £220, then each month, month of, a month is being saved. Is that <coughs> Thanks, Chair. Um, just a question relating to the DB10 on the uh, report. Um, do we know what is the collection rate now compared to before when we had the council tax payment? Thank you, Chair. Uh, up slightly higher up on that page at DP8, um, it does actually show what our previous collection rate was in the second column, which was 96.8. Uh, for Foxy on DPA. That would actually be when council tax benefit was a maximum of 100%. Um, so there is a percentage reduction which largely is attributable to the line on DP10, which is council tax support plus the discounts and exemptions. Um, the figure there is we collected 1.8 to 1.3 million, um, of which certainly a larger amount of that, which I haven't got the figures, would actually be to the Effective shortfall in council tax support, which is people no longer getting 100% getting the 78% max. And that was my own question, Malcolm. I just referred to the privacy. So, previous April 30, people of uh, specific income would receive full council tax benefits. That's been scrapped and replaced with the council tax support scheme. Chair, that was a national scheme council tax benefit which was abolished and the local authorities are each allowed to develop their own scheme so effectively it is a local scheme and the authority decided that the 78% would be maximum. It is only for working age claimants. Uh, people who are defined as vulnerable or pensioners are still maintained uh, through legislation to 100%. So we've got people who are ordinarily on benefits which have been prescribed by the government as minimum, bare minimum, but they're having to pay out of that. Can I just ask, I think we did ask this last thing, that was alluded to this last, when we last met, and I think we, we have this conversation quite frequently, don't we? It's regarding the court action. Are the council obliged to go through the courts when council tax is owed? And what does that cost us each time we do that? And what is the... What's the return we get for the amount we're paying out in court fees? What's the difference? The answer, if people don't pay, yes, we have to take court action. So, for instance, on council tax supports, people who don't pay the 22%, uh, I can't go to the DWP uh, if people haven't paid and ask them to deduct uh, from people's ongoing benefit without the backing of a liability order. So that does have to be done. Um, obviously, the intention is to try and get people to pay. With regards to the other question, with regards to the court costs, they are now £90. Uh, they are charged in all cases. Uh, so, in those cases, that would be added on when we go to the DWP. And yes, that does mean that they take longer to pay because they have to meet our court costs. I'm not allowed to make a profit on the amount of court costs that I charge, and I have to show to the court and the magistrates how I justify the costs of the court action being taken and the staff involved in taking both that action and the ongoing collection of the unpaid debts. Is it a requirement of council to take people to court if they owe council tax? 
I would say with the uh, Section 151 officer sitting next to you that uh, with regards to our duty to collect, yes, um, obviously the intention is to try and get people to uh, pay without the need of it, but ultimately if people don't pay, I have no other option either to leave it as unpaid, which would then increase our non-collections, or try and make sure that we do collect. If I can come back and be interested in that question, but if I can come back to your point on what the other head has to be. Um, just just crunching the numbers just very quickly. So we're we saving 220 people on it, we're saving about 220 pounds a month, that's correct. There are 10.6% of the